Marks 50 years since the Roe v. Wade ruling, which protected a woman's right to an abortion. That ruling is no longer the law of the land. Now, seven months ago, the U.S. Supreme Court overturned that case, and all across our country and here in our nation's capital, people on both sides of this issue have rallied for months to make their voices heard since it was overturned. States have rushed to decide their laws on abortion. Also, women in medical facilities work to figure out how they would navigate the post Roe world. Well, this is new video this morning that you're looking at of crews putting up fencing overnight around the Supreme Court building in anticipation of two marches happening here this weekend. And our Randy Ayala joins us live from outside the Supreme Court this morning on what we can expect. And Randy, I think part of that also is including traffic closures, which we'll get to in just a moment. But first, tell us what's happening around the Supreme Court. Yeah, good morning to you, Annie. So you mentioned it. Here's a look at that metal fencing that's up all around the entire Supreme Court. We're also starting to see more police this morning, too. Uh, I want to show you we have uh, Supreme Court police here. We've got a couple officers huddled outside about four, and we're also seeing uh, Capitol Police this morning. If we go over here, I also took a walk around the building. I saw officers on foot just kind of canvassing the area, too. So that police presence really starting to ramp up this morning. Of course, this is the 50th year for the March, but it's the first in this post Roe v. Wade area era rather. And yesterday I want to mention this. Uh, I went to a protest outside of DC Planned Parenthood. Want to show you the video from there. A couple dozen people out there, but I also got the chance to speak with both people in favor and against abortion. It's the first March for Life in a post row America, so it's really important that we are out here at this abortion facility to let women know that there are other options, that there are other resources, and we're here for them. We should make, um, try and make um, a, a harassment, sidewalk counseling, what was called illegal, because this should not be happening at clinics. We are expecting tens of thousands of people uh, to march on the National Mall. I know Catholic University sent out a statement. They plan on uh, participating as well, students and staff. Sunday is the Women's March for uh, abortion supporters. I just want to mention to that, mention that to you as well. And Michelle, I know for today you're tracking some road closure uh, for folks. Yeah, Randy, driving near the National Mall will be messy later this morning. So first, parking restrictions just started four minutes ago around the National Mall, so you won't be able to park on roads, including including Constitution Avenue between 3rd and 15th Streets Northwest. And then at 10 a.m., the main road closures begin. So all of these roads marked in red will be totally blocked until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Independence Avenue will be closed between 7th Street Southwest and 2nd Street Southeast. Plus, you won't be able to access the 9th or 12th Street tunnels during that time. If you want that full list of road closures, go to WUSA9.com. Annie? Thanks, Michelle. For full coverage of today's march, just head on over to our website, WSA9.com, or you can download um, our app, and you can also stream our WSA9 Plus for Roku and Amazon Fire TV, and you can find our newscast streaming there 24-7.